Hello guys, it's been a little while since I've been on here. Um, I'm excited about the message today. It's titled Blazing Furnace. And we know the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But maybe we can learn some um, new things with the story. And I added some songs through the Holy Spirit. Whatever fiery furnace you're going through, maybe you're waiting on God. That came to me when I was starting this video. As we wait on God, He will renew our strength. So wait on God, wait on God, in Jesus' name. And as we wait patiently, He renews our strength. As we go through the storms of this life and the fiery furnaces. So before I start in Daniel chapter 3, let's pray. Jesus, come to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Speak to me. Be our guides today. Open up the, our hearts, Father. Give us peace and favor to let us know that you're not. we're not alone in this fiery furnace moments in our life. God says, ask and you shall get. You will be restored in Jesus' name. It's coming alive with joy and destiny right now for you. Get a pen and paper out. Write some notes if you don't like reading along. Because um, I believe in writing has power. And you write whatever the scripture I read that comes to your spirit and heart. Write down that word. And in Daniel chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 90 feet wide. Can you imagine? And set it up. On the plain of Dura and the providence of Babylon. Then he sent messages to the high officers, official, officials, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, and all the officials to come to the dedication of this statue he had set up. So all the officials came and stood before the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Big statue! Then Harold shouted out, People of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and other musical instruments, bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statues. And how many idols that w we, might not be gold statues that we put before God? And wondering why we're not getting an answer. We put God first place. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into the furnace. So at, that se at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race, language, bowed to the ground and worshiped that gold statue. What kind of idols? Write it down. And maybe God is impressing your heart to write down. What am I putting in front of God? Before God? The stopping my relationship from being hot. Because God said, you're neither warm. You're neither hot or cold. You're lukewarm. I'll spit you out of my mouth. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed all, on the Jews they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, Long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue. When they heard the sound of the horn and the musical instruments, that decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into that furnace. But there were some, are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the providence of Providence of Babylon. They they were in charge of Babylon. They paid no attention to you, your majesty. They refused to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. What's going to happen? The Nebuchadnezzar flew into rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? 
that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship that gold statue? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I made when you hear the sound of the music. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the fiery furnace. And then what God will... Then what God will be able to rescue you from my power, says Nebuchadnezzar. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, this is an important part right here. We do not need to defend ourselves before you. The battle is God's. If you are thrown into the blazing furnace or whatever you're going through right now, the God whom we serve, is able to save us. Say that. The God whom I serve is able to save me from this fire. He will rescue us. He will rescue you from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't save me from this fire, we want to make it clear to you. Maybe that make that your prayer. Majesty, that we will never serve your God or worship the gold statue. What things are you putting and replacing God with? TV, music, things, games. I'm going to continue to the Daniel read reading, but I'm going to read some uh, songs first. Music is our melody, is our weapon sometimes. Set a fire. I like this song. This World can be cold and bitter. Feels like we're in the dead of winter sometimes. Waiting on something better. But am I really going to hide forever? Over and over again, I hear, the, your, I hear your voice in my head. Let your light shine, let your light shine for all to see. But set a fire in my soul. Fan in the flames and make it grow today. So there's no doubt or denying. Let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you. He's refining you. That it's you that we need to start a, fi start a fire in me. You only need a spark to start. You only need a spark to start a whole blaze. It only takes a little faith. And this is coming to me. There's orphans and kids that don't have food and shelter. The widows, single parents, single people struggling to pay bills. Help out someone in need. That's the, Maybe that's your storm. But God will rescue you just like he did Shagrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So let it start right here in this city. So these old walls will never be the same. Over and over again, I hear your voice in my head. They need to know. I need to go. Spirit wants you fall on my heart right now and set a fire in my soul. I like This song spoke to me for this message. It's called Co Coal Miner's Daughter. Well, I was born a coal miner's daughter. In a cabin on a hill on Butcher Holler. We were poor, but we had love. That's the one thing that Daddy made sure of. He shoveled coal to make a poor man's dollar. My Daddy worked all night in the Van Leer coal mines. All day long in the field. Hoeing corn. Mama rocked the babies at night and read the Bible by the coal... Co-oil light. And everything would start all over again and break a morning. Daddy loved and raised eight kids on a miner's pay. They were poor. Mama scrubbed the, our clothes on a washboard every day. Well, I've, I've seen her fingers bleed. To complain, there was no need. That's key. They did all that. They were poor. But they had love, and that woman didn't complain. Her fingers were bleeding. We don't want to be like the Israelites in that wilderness, complaining and murmuring. Well, I've seen her fingers bleed. To complain, no need. She'd smile in a mommy's understanding way. 
In the summertime, we didn't have shoes to wear. But in the wintertime, we had all, we all get brand new pairs from a mail order catalog. Money made from selling a hog. Daddy always managed to get the money somewhere. Yeah, I'm proud to be a coal miner's daughter. I remembered well where I drew water. Their work was done. The work that was done was hard. At night we sleep because we were tired. A lot of things have changed since back then. And what do we learn from this letter lesson? No matter how poor, how much you're struggling, love is key. You can still smile and have good spirits. And don't complain and be negative. If you're able to take a shower, have proper hygiene. And I'm going to finish the story in Nebuchadnezzar Daniel, starting with verses 19. And I'm reminded of the story of the woman at the well. She'd been married like four or five times. She came to the well and it was scorching, heat, hot. And Jesus met her at the well and told her everything about her. How she was no, not even married to the guy she was with and she'd been married like a bunch of times. She, God, Jesus said that I have a water, a living water. You'll never thirst again. God forgives us of our sin. No matter if we're with someone that we're not married, we're sin, we sinned. No matter the sin, God forgives you. His grace. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with a rage. He, co he commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter. Maybe the fire you're going through seven times hotter. Than any of, the, any of the fires you've ever been through. He ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. They tied them up and threw them in the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as he threw them in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them to, into that furnace? Maybe you feel like you're the only one, you and your family, going through that furnace moment. Yes, your majesty, we certainly did. They replied, Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking into the fire. And the fourth looks like a god. Jesus is in the fire with you. His understanding surpasses our understanding and his ways are higher than our ways. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door in the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come out, come out of here, there. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, governors, and writers crowded around them and saw the fire had not even touched them. Not a hair on their head was singed. They didn't even smell like smoke. Praise the God of the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing, willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their god. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. No matter what you're going through. And I'm going to read a scripture in John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs? But only one person gets the prize? So we run to win, right? All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize, don't we? 
So I run with purpose in every step. Say that. I run with purpose. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training to it to do what it should through the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus that's living inside you. The Lion of Judah that's living inside you. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Might be a hypocrite and a liar. I speak Jesus. I love this song. It's one of my favorite. Maybe you sing this through your fiery furnace moment. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there's a peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there's hope and there's freedom. I speak Jesus. Because your name is power. Your name is healing. That keeps coming to me. The orphans and widows and the people hurting for money. If you got money, you got to help those people. Help the single parents. Because your name is power and your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Strong, shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire within us. Set a fire in our souls. Because your name is power and it's healing over my finances. And whatever medical report you got, there's healing. Your name is life. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy that I'm facing right now. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. There's people hungry and starving and don't have food and groceries. And you are blessed. Help. And when that... um. Make sure, I'm going back to the um, First Corinthians scripture that I read read about. We do it for an eternal price. We keep our focus on the heavenly things, kindness, joy, peace, and not worrying about the situation around us. Like the coal miner's daughter, we love no matter how poor. We don't complain. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Get in a prayer circle today. Pray. Enter trying hearts and pray together and your, with your family. There's another song that I like. My Champion. I've tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. That you'd choose someone like me. And we are instruments of God today. To carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve and you take the broken things in our lives and raise them to glory because you are my champion. Giants will fall when, when you stand undefeated. Every battle you win. Like the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The battle was won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence as I'm seated in the heavenly place. Undefeated. Be warriors on that front line, standing and fighting for your family, men. Now I come finally to see, now I can finally see it. You're teaching me how to receive it and don't bow before no other gods except for the one true God. You are my champion. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority, Jesus, you've given me. When I open up my mouth, miracles are breaking out right now. Because I have the authority Jesus has given me through the Holy Spirit. Uh, one of my other favorite songs, Gratitude. Woo, he hears your warriors cry for help. And the victory in the battle is his. He's the word and the, at the beginning. Alpha and Omega. Gratitude. Here's the lyrics. All my words fall short. 
I got nothing new. How can I express my gratitude to you? I can sing these songs as I often do, but every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands in the middle of the fiery furnace when I don't have a lot of money and I'm poor and praise you again and again like the coal miner's daughter song because all I have is a hallelujah. I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah. I got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide, I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and I praise you again and again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song today. Because you got a lion inside of your lungs. The lion of Judah. Isaiah chapter 40, 27 through 31. And before I read this, take a stand is what God said of faith. Right now, that's for someone. Take a stand of faith. Ears to hear. Eyes to see what God has for you right now. Oh, Jacob, and the generational curse is broken right now in your life. Oh, Jacob, how can you say that the Lord does not see your troubles? Maybe you feel like that. Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the earth, the stars, and the heavens. He never grows weary or weak. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. But yet, when we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts, we have the mind of Christ and put on the full armor of God. So we, we can withstand the the uh, evil spirits and the fiery uh, arrows that come at us. He gives power to the weak right now and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired. Young men will fall in exhaustion, but those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. As you trust, they will soar high on wings of eagles and run and not go faint. Let me get a drink. God will send an army out to find that one lost sheep right now. This next song is called Jesus. There's a truth older than the ages. There's a promise of things yet to come. There's one born for our salvation and it's Jesus. The Lion of Judah. There's a light that overwhelms the darkness. There's a kingdom that forever reigns. Jesus who walks on the water. Who can split the sea when we're in a dead end. Who stands in the fire beside us like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who roars like a lion and bled like a lamb. He carries my healing in his hand? Jesus. There's a name to call in time of trouble. There's a song that comforts in the night. And there's a voice that calms the storm. Jesus. And, in, and, in, and before I read the scripture in Ephesians, it's not by might or force that mountain's going to move from there to there. It's by his spirit that mountain's going to move. Try to orchestrate and plan things on your own. It will fail every time. Get it in your <clears throat> prayer closet and pray. And you got to listen. Allow God to speak to you. Listen. Cut off the music, the TV. Talk to him, pray, and then listen. Meditate on his word day and night. In Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10, God saved you by grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for good things we have done. You can do all the good things you want. But that's not how we get salvation. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us. You can't do it on your own effort. Just accept Jesus Christ into your heart right now. Have faith. 
Let's continue to pray. That was the end of my message, the fiery furnace, but I feel the spirit come on. I feel like people that are going through the fiery furnace moments with their finances and they need healing in their bodies. Maybe it's a relational. Maybe it's family quarrel. We give it to you right now, Jesus. Speak to us. Will you give us the authority and the power through your spirit? We are your masterpiece. We throw our burdens and cast it on the feet of you, Jesus, and our worries. No matter how little or how much we have, we'll have a good heart and smile and not complain. To focus on you more and get rid of all the idols that we have in our lives. Maybe you don't know what they are. Maybe God speaks it to you this week. Don't fear the Lord is here. He's in the fire with you. Take courage. For he is your God. And he's fighting your battles. Feel the presence of God. You feel it? Someone needs to give a, a peace offering. You pray to God, whatever that is. It could be making a meal for someone. It could be giving money to a charity. Maybe it's praying for someone. It don't have to be money. It could be um, whatever God puts in your heart. You need to give a peace offering. Sometimes he, a lot, he wants us to sacrifice and think of someone else other than ourselves. That's a sacrifice. It don't always have to be money. It could be being a um, shoulder for someone that needs to have someone to hold them and hug. A shoulder for someone to cry on. Hold a hand of someone going through cancer or battling depression or the loss of someone that, that passed away. We are to be doers of men. Not just read the word, but act on it. It's your holy presence. Speak to us. He says, feed the children. You can feed them the word of God. You can feed them and help them with money and whatever things you can do with clothing. Clothing drives. But let God speak to your heart right now. Die to yourself. Pick up your cross right now and follow Jesus. It's not I, but Christ who lives in me. It's the overwhelming, reckless love of God that would chase that one sheep, lost sheep, and leave the 99. Jaira will cross an ocean so you won't drown. Hey, Kimberly Sims, Courage Under Fire Ministry, um, YouTube and Podbean app. The Podbean app is free. It's the same uh, title, Kimberly Sims, Courage Under Fire Ministry. I do different messages on the podcast. Um, share my messages. I really feel like God's saying someone is being provoked today. And you're angry. And you're frustrated. And you feel like God ain't hearing your prayers. And you're going through the fire of oppression. But the battle is His. And I'm always here for prayer support. Comment on here. I'll pray for you. you got my, you're friends with me on social media. Message me. I will pray for you. Um, you're close by. I can use anointing oil and pray for you. I love you. Have a blessed day.